All righty. Hope you guys can hear me today. Hello, hello, Peace to Prophets. Good to see you today. Um, thank you so much for hopping in here and joining me. I'm not even sure if I'm live and um, if I'm on if I'm on Facebook. <laughs> if this doesn't make it to Facebook, then I will definitely upload this video later. But um, good to see you guys today. So today we are continuing on with part two of Coaching While Christian. Okay. And so I'm going to be sharing my notes with you on some of the things that us as believers need to be aware of as we are Christian kingdom faith based coaches um, in the spiritual space. OK, um, one of the things that has um, been very evident is that the world has run out of options and they are looking for the answers. And so they're seeking answers. And unfortunately, the enemy is showing himself as a light um, through well-meaning people, but um, it's not the truth. And so we're going to talk about that today. I'm definitely going to pray um, before we get started. And um, let's see here. Hello there. Good to see you today. Thank you so much. And thanks for your comment because I had like, I have no idea if we're live or not. My iPad is, I don't know where, and uh, I don't have, um, I, even though I've got my your piece in. I don't have Facebook on my cell phone. It's only on my computer. I didn't want to log in on my computer while I'm talking to you, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Coach Kim. So let me pray. Okay. And then we're going to talk about this. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you for you. I thank you for your truth. I thank you, God, for your, your women, your warriors who are even on this. Um, they may be live or they may be coming. They may watch the replay. They may even be on YouTube when I upload this to YouTube. But I thank you for your warriors who are saying enough is enough. Satan, we see you. Satan, you've been exposed and we are calling you out. We are dispelling the lies, the myths, and we are showing people the truth. We are standing up for the truth. We are standing up for what's right. So I thank you, God, for the people that will see this and be made aware of, of maybe some things that they need to change, some terminology that needs to be shifted so that they can better represent you out there in the marketplace. Be glorified and just have your way in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All righty. All right. So last week and because I was kind of just flowing, like I kind of just like went off and started flowing. I don't exactly remember all of what I talked about last week, but I definitely remember we talked about the Enneagram and knowing the source of some of these um, uh, personality tests. We talked about uh, vibes and deja vu. I know I went in about diva went in. I shared the story about my grandmother. Um, and I don't know if we talked about empath. I think we did. Okay. I think we did. But if not, then let me, um, let me mention that. <clears throat> no, we did talk about empath. You can catch out part one. You can catch part one. Yeah. We talked about it. So I got some more. Okay. This is going to ruffle some feathers, but <clears throat> we're just going to talk about it. All right. And I want to, I'm going to tell you, I am only speaking from my understanding. I don't know it all. I don't know it all. And to be honest, I don't want to know it all. I want, I like that God is still a mystery, right? God is, God is still a mystery, <laughs> but um, we're going to talk about some things that some terminology and some things that um, people talk about in the, the faith space as it relates to um, connecting with people and um, and trying to drum up and build a community with people that just don't align, align to what God's word is, okay? All righty, so let's move on here. And why is this still doing me dirty? Okay, I think we got it. Oh, we don't have it. Why don't we have it? Okay, there, now we got it. Oh, all right, listen, let me tell you, Okay, if I could just have a moment of transparency for all the warriors out here, right? Keep your girl lifted. Today, I've been like ambushed. I feel like the, Satan had tried to ambush me. Like, like, have you ever <laughs> been in a situation and you're like, wait a minute, what is, what is going on? And you're protected and you're not being hit. You're not being harmed, but you see it and you're like, what the heck? 
let me tell you, today is one of those days. God's angels are like, what, what? We got you, we got you. Like all the shields and like God's angels are blocking and I can see it all, but he's blocking it. So I'm in a very grateful, but kind of mad space. And I know that the enemy doesn't like this. I know he doesn't like it, but I have two choices. Oh, where are my tissue? Cause why am I about to cry? I have the choice to keep trusting Jesus that he is fighting my battles, which I see him doing, or I can let the enemy have his way and get to my mind, get to the people I care about, come in crazy ways, even through my finances. It's like weird, like what's going on? <laughs> so have two choices and I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. <laughs> All right. So keep me lifted y'all. And uh, just bear with me as I, I don't want to say make it through this, but listen, when I say ambushed today, ambushed. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some other things that we may hear in the spiritual space. And I'm still just like trying to get it together. Okay, so one of the things we might hear is oracle. And the thing about the word oracle that has me confused, well, had me confused, is that that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. So I went looking up scriptures where it talks about the word oracle because it's a biblical term, right? And so I know, and you've heard me say, like, no, we're taking back, you know, what was rightfully God's. And, you know, we're taking this is a kingdom takeover. And we're not going to let the enemy take what was rightfully ours as a part of the kingdom of God. But the way, so let me talk about this word oracle. It's the way that the word is used. It's the, the context in which the word is used, which can be very deceiving. So um, before I did my research, well, every time I heard, heard oracle, I thought they're talking about a psychic. They're talking about somebody who is working for the kingdom of darkness, trying to tell you your future and tell you you know, tell you what is happening in your life, right? That is what oracles do. Now, listen, okay? That is what the oracles do. I know you're like, okay, but if it's in the Bible, make this make sense. I'm, I'm getting there. So the other thing about psychics, okay? The other thing about psychics and people who do tarot card readings and angel card readings, they are... Um, and I learned this from my friend, my friend and my brother, Pastor uh, Jamal Maxim, who is like the spiritualism dismantler. What the enemy is going to do is going to he's going to pervert and twist the way words are used, the context of them. And um, Pastor Jamal has made me aware that, well, the reason why. Um, some of these people who are working for the kingdom of darkness are able to kind of like see what's happening and tell things is because they are also prophetic. They are prophetic. And I know, I know I, there are two people in my life, two people, one who still operates on the dark side and one who is now over in the light. Well, three people, actually, they were they were telling you your future. OK, to the extent that they were able, but they were operating in their gift of prophecy, but they were using it for the dark side. Now, two of the people don't. One of the people still does, but they are prophetic. So oracles are prophetic. But why is this not of God? It's not of God, because when I looked it up in scripture and let me give you guys the scriptures about. Um, so Malachi 1, 1, Isaiah 13, 1. Um, Isaiah 14, 28, Isaiah 21, Isaiah 30 are just a few of them. Hold on here. Um, Habakkuk 1, 1. Um, Isaiah, Isaiah 17, 1. I mean, and there are so many more scriptures I can give you about the context of the word oracle. And I got to not yell because I'm really feeling this. And I hate how the enemy tries to take something that was scriptural and pervert it and make it his own. So, so. Okay, I'm I'm promise I'm getting there. I just want to pause. Like it really upsets me because even in some of the prophetic rooms that I go into on Clubhouse and like YouTube videos and things I see, I see well-meaning people. 
who are prophetic, who are not on the dark side, still calling themselves a oracle and proud of it. But this is where they've gone wrong. All right. This is where this is where they've 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 kind of got it twisted. And even if no, I don't feel like we can. I don't feel like there's a way to justify how it's been twisted. So when you look up uh, the word oracle or the context of oracle in those scriptures, they are not talking about a person. They are talking about the prophecy, the prophecy, not the prophet or the prophetic person. So for you to take on the image of God's prophecy and say that you are the prophecy that we can't do. We can't take, we can't add to God's word. We can't distort God's word. We can't twist God's word. All we can do is say what he said. The, the word is very clear. Now where that scripture is, I don't remember, but I know y'all know how I do, but it's in there. It's in there where it says we are not to add to God's word. We're not to take and twist his word. We're not supposed to do that. That is where it becomes witchcraft. So Oracle. Is it in the Bible? Yes. Is it something that we we should be averse to? No. But be careful when people are calling themselves the oracle. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So just know that. All righty. Okay. Uh, all righty. Um, what's another one here? Okay. So we talked about oracle. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a big one. Come on, energy, energy, <laughs> right? Bad energy, good energy, energy healer, all right? So um, energy, I, and I use this word energy, but we have to, again, and like we talked about last week, we have to know the context of how the word is being used. And so let's be aware that when some people use the word energy, does that mean it's a bad thing? No, no. No, not at all. We listen, I'm going to say it. God is energy. God is energy. Right? He's the one that created the heavens and the earth. He's the one that that made daytime day and nighttime night. He's the one that put the water on Listen, all of these are energy sources. Right? But God is the source. Okay? So, when you hear people talking about energy and tap into your feminine energy. That's another one. The feminine energy. Listen, God created us. And I think I tapped on this a little bit last week. God created us to be feminine. Absolutely. We're wired differently than men, but that's not the source of our power. And so when you have people talking about their energy or their feminine energy or their masculine energy, and there's some more, um, but I can't think about them. I can't think of them off the top of my head. We got to be careful. Who, who are you giving the credit to? Where, where, <laughs> Where's the, where's the 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 source? Uh, who are we giving credit to? Where's the source? What's the source of this energy? This so-called energy. Okay, if if God is not being credited as the source of the energy, just beware. Just beware. Okay. All righty. Moving on. I'm feeling better. So thank you for those of you that have prayed for my strength. <laughs> we talked about diva last week. Um, another word is juju. Now, juju is a French word. Yo, what's happening over there in Europe? What, what was going on over there in Europe? Because a lot of these things come from European this and right? French that and right? What's that? <laughs> I think I need to do some research about what's happening over there across the pond. But anyways, over there in Europe, um, in France, the word, we get the word juju. Juju is a spiritual belief system, um, uh, objects. It, it's around objects. It's around spells. It's around spiritual practices. It's uh, It's witchcraft is what it is. So when you hear people talk about, yeah, you know, I'm not into that juju or... They may say this isn't woo-woo, woo-woo and juju, right? When you hear somebody say woo-woo, yeah, they're they're not talking about, they're, they're talking juju, <laughs> woo-woo and juju, all right? So um, it also has witchcraft roots in, listen, Nigeria and Cameroon, 
Okay. So that leads me to it. Listen, a lot of, so some of what I have written is taking me to things that I don't have written down. Um, let's talk about this. The ancestors. Be real careful when people are talking about overly about honoring the ancestors and calling on the ancestors and praying to the ancestors. First of all, the Bible is very clear about calling on spirits from the dead. That's witchcraft, y'all. Necromancy, necromancy. I'm not sure how to say the name, but I think that's what it is. Nec necropocracy. I don't know how to say it. Necromancy, I think. Okay, calling on spirits from the dead. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not calling on no, no, no ancestors. No, we're not. No, we're not. Now, can we honor the memory of someone who has gone and passed away? Yes. Acknowledge it. Sit in your emotions for a minute and hop right on out. Because I'm going to tell you what that opens up the door for. And I cannot even believe I'm like going here right now because this isn't the... This isn't what this was about, but maybe God is like, yes. So you are opening up the doorway for familiar spirits, okay? And if you don't know what that is, again, we're not really going there, but I want to just make you aware of familiar spirits. When you start calling on the dead like that, you are calling on familiar spirits. And don't be surprised, listen, if these familiar spirits start trying to wreak havoc in your life. Listen, I'm going to tell you one of the things I said I was ambushed by Satan because we disrupted Satan's plans on Sunday. If I can have a personal moment, I put my family business out there. One of my bonus boys has a very, very interesting connection to two of his relatives. And um, we've known this for years, but Sunday at our family meeting, enough was enough. No more division, no more disunity, no more um, discord. Okay. And um, I've got, I hang in some prophetic circles. And so people just, they pray, they call me, they tell me things. And just because our spirits are aligned. And um, I, I've been told about the familiar spirits. I've been told about the monitoring spirits <laughs> that are uh, surrounding me. And they are, they're even on social media. Y'all be careful when the prophets reach out to you on social media and they have a word for you. Be careful. I'm telling you right now, they are, listen, listen, listen. They're not telling you anything new that you haven't already put out there. So they're at, they're gathering all the information over the, cause they're watching and they're patient. They are patiently watching and waiting to connect with you so that they can tell you what the word of the Lord says. And you know what it is? It's all the stuff that they've been collecting and writing down and checking off so that when they connect with you, they can build trust because they're telling you stuff that you have already told them through your social media post. They're watching you. They're watching you. They are watching you. Believe that. So anyways, back to my family. So we put the kibosh on it. We were like, enough is enough. Listen, when I tell you when I tell you Satan showed his butt in my house, in my house on Sunday, me and my husband was like, oh, that's that's how this is going down? That's how it went down. So I'm not surprised at everything that I've been hit with. Uh, that was on Sunday, Monday, yesterday, this morning, this afternoon, and it's already, it's all, only just one o'clock. All right? So. What was I talking about? Calling on ancestors, juju, familiar spirits. Yeah. It's important that we know these things so that we can do our part. Do our part to fight what the enemy is trying to do in our lives and in our businesses. It's important. And once we've been made aware, now we know how to pray about it. Just do a Google search. How can I pray against you know, how can I pray against this or pray against that? Or, you know, just 
and use that when you pray. Get very specific with your prayers. So again, using my family's example, like my prayers this week and the scriptures that I've been using in my prayers this week have all been around um, division and unity and how we can prevent division and create unity. And Satan doesn't like it because y'all, I pray and I pray loud in my house for a long time. <laughs> so I just want you to be aware. That's the importance of this. Okay. And again, we're going to be doing this probably for several weeks because there's a lot. And as I go through this, more stuff comes out. Okay. All right. So what time? Okay. I got, I'll do one more. Oh, this is a good, listen, listen, I have to be very careful because I still use this one, but I use it. So I got to be careful because in the context that I use it, I'm using it in the right context. But the people that I'm using it with don't know that I'm using it in the right context. Okay. The word is guru, right? How many times have you guys heard me say guru? I've used that word. I talk about, oh, the internet guru says this. And I was saying it like kind of like smirking and like side eyeing them. And I should have been, <laughs> but the word guru, dog, oh, that is a Hindu, Buddhist, um, Sikhism word. That is not our faith. That is not our faith. That is a spiritual guide. That's a spiritual guide. And let me see. Um, in Hinduism, it taught it. It's a god. And not only is it a guide, but it's a god. It's a planet god. All right. And so um, if we are calling a Christian a guru and I apologize for any believer that I've ever considered to be a guru, because here we go. Me being well-meaning, I'm just saying they're an expert. That's the word I should use. I should say expert. I should not use the word guru because they are not gurus. They are not um, they are not planet gods. They are not spiritual leaders in Hinduism, Buddhism, or Sikhism. They're not. They're not. They are believers and they are experts. So that is how I should be using it. But you will you will probably still hear me say the guru online. Yeah, the guru that got that that's got your attention because they call themselves a Christian or they say that they're faith based or they're calling all Christians. Be careful. For some of these coaches who say, if you are a female Christian, listen, <laughs> my friends used to make fun of me and my husband kind of does too. He says that I have an uncommon curiosity and I couldn't even get mad at him because without the explanation, my spirit knew exactly what he meant. I absolutely have an uncommon curiosity. On social media, I'm looking at people. I am checking out their posts. Now, I'm not stalking them or nothing, but when they say certain things and my spirit is like, go check them out. I check them out. They're not who you think they are. I'm telling you. I'm telling you because they cannot be calling themselves, you know, calling all kingdom focused Christian, Christian female coaches and they get, they're getting you in their challenges. They're getting you in their master classes. They're signing you up for their webinars. They're getting you on their email list. They're inviting you to their Facebook communities. But they are talking about all kinds of new age stuff laced through their posts. And it's in there. It's in there. And it's so subtle. And I'm going to tell you, there might be some people, I don't know exactly who's watching right now, but I know that I know for certain there's some people that check out my replay. You're who I'm talking to. Be careful. And when the spirit of God stirs up in you, you know, maybe is this a red, it, if you got to even think, is this a red flag? It's probably a red flag. So just be careful about that. Okay. So if they are a expert, let's just call them an expert, but you still might hear me say guru. And that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> All right. So expert. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at the time. Last time we went a little bit long and I kind of ranted last week and I ranted this week and I cried a little bit. So um, we were, we're definitely going to continue this on next week. We got so much more to cover. And the more I cover, um, the more God tells me stuff that I know is not on my list. And so I just thank him for this this opportunity to kind of show up a little bit differently in this space. This is not typically how I show up. Um, I give you guys the training. I give you guys, um, you know, practical things that you can use in your coaching businesses and resources to other things, but it's time. 
listen, it's time. It's time. It's time that we tell the enemy no more that it's done. It's over. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And let me see. I am going to check the, um, let me check the chat, the chat today. Um, yes, coach T listen, listen, listen. So I'm going to tell you early in my early days, there was somebody who was like, Oh, I see you got this going on and I see you and your husband do this. And, um, no, 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 no. That's not what she did. She, that's not what she did. Nope. Nope. I'm sorry. That's not how it happened. She, uh, connected with me, um, through Facebook messenger. And she said that, um, she has a unique ministry, uh, a unique Facebook ministry. And this was a long time ago. So I'm in a much different place today, but she said she had a unique Facebook ministry and, um, she had something from the Lord that she needed to tell me. Now I, I get messages like that from people on, Instagram all the time. And I just block them. I take one look at their profile. I'm like, hi, priestess. Uh, no. And I look at all the spells and potions and I'm like, uh, no, but this one was different. Now I am even more confirmed because I know that when I see these people, I'm just going to call them these people. There's something about their images on the screen that is distorted to me and other people don't see the images. Uh, I asked my husband, I was like, what do you notice anything in common about these profiles? And he's like, no, they look witchy. They look witchy, but there's a, um, God has given me some kind of filter or something on my eyeballs. I'm telling you where the, the, it looks like there's a special, some sort of filter that is very consistent with witchcraft. Like I see it. And so I went to her profile and it looked very unassuming. So me and her, we had a call and um, everything, she wasn't giving me no, pro no new prophecy. She was not giving me a new prophecy. And let me tell you, I'm also going to put this on blast, Satan, because I see see you. And I saw you on Monday, Satan, in my marriage room on Clubhouse. I'm putting this one out there for the airways. I'm just saying it. Somebody tried to pour into somebody I know and didn't tell her nothing new. It won't no, it won confirmation. It won validation. It won nothing new. Girl, you, you, you telling her stuff that you got for her, so her social media. I peeped that and I saw it. But anyway, so this woman did not tell me anything new. Like God, wh why is God telling you old news? Like you ain't telling me, God, what, what are you telling me? Well, you ain't telling me nothing I haven't heard before. And it's, and hear me, it's not that she was giving me a, this will happen. God is saying this will happen. Everything she was talking about has already happened. Like she was fake. Okay. And so y'all, this was a killer. So then, and some of you in this space know exactly how I feel about this. So then she said, okay, well, woman of God, um, the Lord told me that it, I have not because I ask not. And so my husband and I, we have a need. And so she asked me to sow into her ministry. And so I was really like, God, something about this does not feel right. But I'm, I'm a little bit stirred up by what she said, because even though I see that it has happened and it is happening, I'm stirred up. You know, I was excited. So I said to God, Lord, if this is not, if this woman is fake, <laughs> I need you to block me sending her this money. I need you, God, block it. God, block it. And it wasn't no huge, crazy amount, but I was like, God, I need for you to block it. Do you know that I couldn't cash app her with one account? I couldn't PayPal her with another account. I couldn't do it through any of the ways. And then my bank called me and said that she was on a list. So I said, thank you, Jesus. And I did send her a message. Now, did I cuss her out? No. But I certainly called her out. <laughs> I called her out. So uh, now people like that, they, they, they don't get over on me like that. So I need you to be careful. Be careful. We are in the day and age where people are seeing you shine for Christ. They, you are shining. You are shining bright. 
and they see it and they want to stifle it. And the Leviathan spirit wants to suffocate it. Okay, look that up. Now's not the time. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't even said it. We need to know what we are up against. All right. So, um, Coach T, yeah, that happened to me too. Um, what do we have here? Yes. Hey, Coach Lynn. So, yes, Coach Lynn, every single month I do a, a series. Usually it's three weeks long, first, second, and third um, Wednesday of the month. And then the last Wednesday of the month, I usually have everybody on Zoom and we do like an hour long QA. Um, I know that this is going to extend beyond three weeks. It's probably going to extend beyond six weeks. I'm telling you guys. Okay. So every Wednesday, we are talking about things Christians should be aware of coaching while Christian. And when I say Christian, I really mean following Christ, pursuing, pursuing the attributes and characteristics of Jesus as we carry out our coaching business. Yeah. Taking that back too. Taking back what Christianity is really about. Okay. Just me. I know I'm a one, one woman army in this, but I'm taking that back. Okay. So yeah, this is a series. All right. Okay, guys. I feel like I need an after church nap. <laughs> so um, thanks so much, everybody. I did put in the chat, if you are not um, connected to me in my Impeccable Impact Mentorship community, that is a community where we also go kind of deep. And um, I love that community. We uh, Monday nights, we have something called a fo focus sessions. And we've been using my girlfriend's um, journal. Um for our focus sessions. And um, I've got plans for our next focus, but um, the Monday night meetings are just so enriching. And um, those that come just Y'all, y'all, some of you that are in this community as well, in the, the Facebook community are also part of my impeccable impact mentorship community. And it's just such a blessing <laughs> to be with other women who they just want God. They just want to see his face. And although we're building businesses, it's not about God. Give me the clients. God, give me the funding. God, give me the resources. No, these are people who are saying, God, I want to give of myself to you so that I can please you and do what you are wanting for me to do. And so it's just amazing to be in that community. So I, I put the link in there. If you want to hop on in, hop on in. There's about 30 other people in there, 35 people. I don't know how many we have now, but um, great space. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, let me pray. And um, let me pray. And then we're going to conclude. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for your spirit, your spirit of truth. God, thank you for your truth. I thank you right now, Father, that each and every person that is under the sound of my voice via live stream, uh, replay, whatever. God, I pray right now that you remove scales from their eyes, the scales they don't even know exist, God, so that your truth can show and be revealed to them in their lives and how they pursue you and what that looks like in their ministries, in their marriages, in their parents. God out in the marketplace with their businesses. Let them pursue you and your truth and speak your truth in boldness and encourage God. Oh, Jesus, be with your daughters today, God. Be with your daughters as they seek to please you, as they seek to be vessels and conduits, God, of your grace, your love, and your mercy. God, give them rest. I posted something earlier today. Give them rest. Let them find rest. Let them have margin in their lives that they're not seeking the next best thing, but they are seeking you and your truth, God. Be who they need. Be what they need. And be how they need it today, God. Bless them. Touch them, 
Keep them, encourage them, inspire them, God. You, not me, you, you do these things and have your way mightily in their lives. Be magnified, God. I thank you for the testimonies. I thank you for the testimonies. I thank you for the testimonies, God. No matter how small, no matter how insignificant it seems, I thank you, God, that you are giving your daughters the courage to celebrate and testify that they were a witness to you and your loving kindness through their business, through their marriage, through their ministry and their marketplace. God, you're so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen, guys. All right. Have an amazing, amazing day. I'll see y'all later.